Hello, welcome to Ludic Science. In this video, I will talk about supercapacitors and how to protect them in a simple way from over voltage. As you know, supercapacitors are like normal electrolytic capacitors, but they have much more capacitance. Instead of ratings of microfarads, they are rated in farads. They work at 2.5 or 2.7 volts. These here are all of 2.7 volts maximum. And they have different capacities. This small one, for example, is 10 farads. This is 100 farads. And the larger one is 500 farads. This large capacity makes them suitable to replace batteries in some applications. Next time you need a PCB for your electronics project, consider using the professional services of JLC PCB. JLC PCB is the world leader in PCB fabrication. You can order online. You just need to register, upload your Gerber file, and wait a few days for your PCBs at an unbeatable price. For example, let me connect this electric motor to the supercapacitor. You can see how the motor runs without problems. One of the advantages of supercapacitors with respect to batteries is that you can charge them very, very quickly. A supercapacitor can be charged in less than one minute, while a rechargeable battery takes about an hour to charge. And also, you can discharge them very quickly. A supercapacitor can give you a lot of current while a battery is limited in the amount of current that you can obtain from it. For example, let me short the terminals of this supercapacitor with the wire from this resistor and see what happens. The current was so high that it melted the wire of the resistor. Supercapacitors are very sensitive to over voltage. They are rated at 2.7 volts and if you go beyond that voltage, they can be damaged. So you need a way to ensure that the maximum voltage is not surpassed. Of course, there are commercial circuits that do this task, but in this video, I will show you how to do it using just common diodes. Of course, if, if you have a variable lab power supply, you can simply set it at 2.7 volts and charge your super cap without any issues. However, you may want to charge your caps from a renewable power source, for example, using solar panels, but there are no solar panels of exactly 2.7 volts. In this case, you will use a 5 volt solar panel, but you cannot go to 5 volts in the super cap because you will damage it. So in this case, you need some kind of circuit to limit the voltage to 2.7 volts or less. Here we can see the voltage current curve of a forward bias polarized diode. As you can see, the current is zero until we reach the forward voltage, which is around 0.7 volts. That is, the diode does not conduct until we are at this value of voltage, between 0.6 and 0.7 volts. Let's check with this diode. I have the negative connected to negative of the power supply and positive to positive. Turn on. Obviously, at zero volts, we have 
no current flowing, if we apply 0.1 volts, still zero current. We can increase 0 0.2, 0 0.3, and no current will flow because we have not reached the forward voltage of the diode. 0 0.5 volts, still nothing. At 0 0.6, let's see, we have a very small current, 9 milliamps. The diode is starting to conduct the electricity. But at the forward voltage of 0.7 volts, we have now 65 milliamps. The diode is now conducting electricity. Now at 1 volt, we have more than 1 amp. Once we know that, what happens if we connect a diode to the terminals of the capacitor? Well, it depends on the capacitor's voltage. If the voltage is less than the forward voltage of the diode, less than 0.7 volts, then no current flows through the diode and the capacitor will stay at 0.5 volts. However, if the voltage is greater than 0.7 volts, for example, 2 volts, then the diode starts to conduct, electricity will flow, and the capacitor will start to discharge. The voltage will go down until it reaches the value of 0.7 volts and the current stops and then the capacitor will stay at 0.7 volts. Okay, let's make the test. I have the diode connected in parallel with the capacitor, negative of the diode with negative of the capacitor. And I'm going to connect the multimeter to check the voltage in the capacitor. You can see that it is almost discharged, 0 0.02 volts and connect the power supply to charge the capacitor. Okay, I'm going to apply 0.1 volts. You can see how now the capacitor is at 0.1 volts. The diode is not conducting. It is as, as if there was no diode. Now the current drops to zero because the capacitor has already charged to the voltage of the power supply. If we increase to 0.3 volts, current is flowing while the capacitor charges to 0.3 volts. It is now at 0.3 volts and the current drops to zero. Now let's increase to 0.5, still below the forward voltage of the diode. Okay, we are now at 0.5 volts, but there is, okay, now we are at zero, zero current. At 0.6 volts, we are close to the forward voltage of the diode. Okay, the capacitor has charged to the voltage of the power supply but there is a small current flowing. That means that the diode is starting to conduct current. We are close to the forward voltage of the diode. And if we now increase to 0.7 volts, which is the forward voltage, it varies a little with depending on the type of diode. You can see that the voltage in the capacitor is at almost 0.7 but the diode is drawing 58 milliamps of current. The diode tries to maintain the voltage at 0.7 volts. Let's increase to 0.8. There is a small increase in the voltage of the capacitor but we are drawing now much more current. The diode is 
drawing all the excess current to try to reduce the voltage in the capacitor. Let's put now 1 volt only 0.8 volts in the capacitor but we are drawing more than 1 amp in the diode. At 1.2 the capacitor still has 0.8 volts and the excess voltage is consumed by the diode which is now drawing 2.1 amps. So in this way the diode is helping the capacitor to stay close to 0.7 volts. Of course if we need more voltage in the capacitor we can put diodes in series. For example, here I have three diodes. Since each diode has a voltage of around 0.8 volts, the maximum voltage in the capacitor with these three diodes will be around 2.4 volts. So let me connect the power supply and uh, I'm going to use first two volts, which is lower than 2.4 and we will see that the capacitor will be charged to that two volts. And the current will drop to zero as we approach the two volts. But if we now use a voltage higher than 2.4, let's use 2.5 volts, the diodes will try to stabilize the voltage at 2.4 volts and now the current does not drop to zero, the diodes are drawing around 300 milliamps. If we increase the voltage further, 2.6 volts, the voltage in the capacitor increases very little. The diodes are trying to maintain the voltage at 2.4 and now are drawing even more current. The disadvantage of this method is first that it is not very precise, there are variations in the voltage because the voltage current curve of the diode is not linear and second and most important is that we can only use voltage that are multiples of 0.8 or around 0.7 volts. If we want to charge the capacitor at its rated voltage of 2.7 volts, we cannot do that. Using three diodes, as in the example, gives a maximum voltage of 2.4, but if we add another diode and use four, the capacitor will be charged at around 3.2 volts and it will be damaged. Now that we have a method to maintain a constant voltage in the capacitor, we can use it to balance a bank of supercapacitors in series. They are used in series because since the maximum voltage of supercapacitors is 2.7 volts, this may be very low for some applications. So we connect them in series to increase the voltage. However, even if you use identical capacitors, because of their tolerance, the capacitances may be slightly different and that will cause that the voltages differ between the capacitors. And if one of them has a voltage higher than 2.7, it may be damaged. So we can add diodes at each capacitor to maintain a constant voltage and the voltage that we apply to the bank will be shared equally among the three or more capacitors in series. As an illustration, I'm going to charge this bank. I will select three volts at the power supply and let's see. Turn on. The bank will be charged to three volts and ideally each capacitor will have one volt. But, okay, let's see. I'm going to disconnect the power supply and check the voltage of each individual capacitor. The first one has a voltage of 0.91. The 
second capacitor is 0.86 and the third one has a voltage of 1.15 volts so the voltage was not divided equally the sum is 3 volts but this one has a higher voltage than the other two if we try to charge them so that each one has 2.7 volts this one will have a larger voltage and it may be damaged I'm going to repeat the test but using a diode at each of the capacitors since the diodes will try to maintain a voltage of around 0.7 to 0.8 volts at each capacitor let's see if that is the case I'm going to charge the bank using a voltage of 2.8 volts and wait for the voltage in the bank to stabilize okay we are at 2.64 volts I'm going to disconnect the power supply and test the voltage at each of the capacitors in the first capacitor we have 0.68 volts in the second 0.67 and at the third one we have 0.64 not perfect but it is a lot better than in the previous case the voltage at each capacitor only varies in the hundreds of a volt okay that's all for today i hope you liked the video if that is the case please visit my patreon page thanks and see you in the next one